Okay, hello, this is Dr. James, and today I'm going to talk about designing a primary for a high-voltage Tesla coil, and uh, it's going to be very interesting, and this is a coil that we're going to be working with in the back, and I'm going to show you how to design the primary circuit for this. Okay. Let's get going. Okay, hello, this is Dr. James, and today I'm going to talk about designing uh, primary coils for uh, your Tesla coil. Okay, so um, I bought some Tesla coils a while back, and the hard part is winding the big, big uh, solenoid part of the Tesla coil. And uh, these are the primaries that came with it, and I decided that the inductance is too low uh, for what I want to do. I it's probably better to have lower inductance because if you have a higher capacitance, you're going to put more energy into the coil. But I'm kind of doing something different with the coils, and I have a certain set of capacitors I want to use, and I don't have enough capacitance to uh, get the frequency low enough using this coil. So I'm going to, uh, I measured this coil in another video, and it was about 11 microhenries, I believe. And so I'm going to use the measurement of this and um, some uh, calculations of, uh, you know, from Maxwell's equations, of course, uh, to uh, try to tune this resonance to uh, uh, the frequency that I want by uh, ch uh, choosing the proper inductance. And I want to increase the inductance about a factor of five, I believe. Okay, so let's take a look here. Okay, looks like it has finally arrived. Let's take a look what this is. Okay, yeah, I ordered a bunch of high voltage capacitors for some interesting projects I'm going to be working on. It looks like they're here, 15 kV, uh, 1 nanofarad, I believe. Okay, should be interesting. Okay, in my previous video I showed how to make these inductors, or these capacitors, and you can stack them up and tune them, and actually these probably have a much higher voltage than what I even rated them at. because it's, I haven't tested them, but I bet it's very high. But uh, that's not what I'm going for in this coil. So I, I ordered some lower voltage capacitors. These are 15 kV capacitors. And um, I'd like to... Uh, turns out as you start adding capacitance, it's easier to tune it because the capacitance... Um, because uh, well, I'll show you the equation. It's got a square root in it, so uh, you'll get finer increments as you add capacitance. But I wanted to get um, the coil to a certain value before I started adding capacitors. Okay, let, let, let's let's take a look at our spreadsheet. Well, first um, I found this uh, end cap from Home Depot, and it's about the same diameter as this guy, and it's a lot more sturdy. These things are pretty squishy. You can squeeze them and stuff. And um, I think maybe I could drill a hole in this and use it to fasten the, the coil as a single unit. Maybe put a threaded rod down the middle of it. So we'll see. Let, let me take a look at the spreadsheet and we'll talk about what we want here. Okay. okay, so here is our equation for inductance. And uh, this, this is for an infinite solenoid. For a finite solenoid, there's going to be geometry factors. But uh, basically the inductance goes as n squared. And so if I know that this coil over here has eight turns on it, right? So if it had eight turns and I want to put more turns, I can just, uh, and it, I use the same diameter, I can measure what this is, which I measured with my um, handy dandy universal meter here. And then I can just scale the number of turns by the whatever turns squared over uh, 8 squared, since that's 8, and uh, the inductance will probably be about that, and we'll do some measurements to see if it is. Okay, Okay. so here's my spreadsheet that I was using to uh, calculate the resonant frequency, and of course, uh, you know, this is the equation for the resonant frequency, back of the envelope here f equals 1 over 2 pi, square root of LC, and um, our resonant frequency that I'm going to shoot for is going to be about 
200 or uh, yeah 221 kilohertz okay and so this is the number of capacitors and the number of windings and so if I change the number of capacitors from 10 to 9 see it goes up about 10 kilohertz so we'll have about a 10 kilohertz adjustability if okay see about another 10 if we have about 17 windings on the coil and the inductance actually changes the resonant frequency a lot okay remember if you have a higher inductance you'll typically have a higher Q but uh, if you have a higher capacitance you're going to have a lot more energy since we're storing the energy up in a capacitor and then discharging it into the coil through disruptive discharge higher capacitance means more energy into the coil and so what I'm going to do let's see is uh, try to aim for about and here's a here's a calculation of what our inductance should be about 500 uh, or, I'm sorry, 51, 52 uh, microhenries. Okay, oh, come on. Okay, so 52 microhenries. And remember, our original measurement was about 11 microhenries. Okay, so about five times what we had before. And so going from 8 to 17 gives you a ratio of, well, a little bit less than five times, but. 17 or 18. Let's let's try winding some coils and we'll measure them with our handy dandy uh, uh, LCR meter and we'll see what we get and uh, uh, should be interesting. Hopefully we can get the resonant frequency right. Okay. okay so I went to Home Depot and bought some I guess this is 14, 14 gauge I assume single wire 14 uh, stranded it's stranded on the inside when they get quite a bit of it and I'm going to do a little trick I'm going to show you a little trick how to uh, take measurements without cutting the wire and I learned this uh, when I was uh, working on cars also you can use that for cars as well and uh, so I'm going to try to wind some windings onto this guy maybe nine on the first layer and then um, <clears throat> We'll put another layer on and take some measurements and uh, see what our inductance is. Okay, should be interesting. Okay, so we have our coil of windings here and we have some calipers here. And uh, it's about three millimeters. And uh, this guy is about. 48 and according to my calculations I can fit just about 17 windings on here if I'm very judicious so maybe I'll just put a single layer it's always better to have a single layer okay let's see if we can fit a single layer on here okay I got some electrical tape and I just tape this wire right up at the edge here and I think I'm put some in the middle of the we, we need a lead coming off right so I want to have some lead wire so I kind of stick it in the middle so it doesn't get in the way while I'm winding and let me start winding this around the outside okay okay so I added a couple more pieces of tape to make sure it's stable all the way around its uh, orbit here around the windings all the way around the, the, the uh, tube that I got here and uh, so then I'll just start winding the next layer on and I'll just wind it down and see how many layers I can get and uh, see if we can do this in a single layer which I prefer to do okay, okay. handy dandy lap coil winder huh? there we go I'm gonna tighten these up okay that looks like the coils coming along pretty nicely Okay, I think I finished the windings, and we have 17 on there, and I put some tape on the bottom to kind of hold it in place, and I'm going to test it, and if it looks good, I'm going to wrap tape around uh, the equatorial direction, because that makes it a lot stronger that way. 
But let me, um, I'm going to find a pin, and I'm going to uh, stick a pin into the wire so I don't have to cut it. And then we'll take a measurement, because the pin will be conductive and it'll go through the insulation. It'll just make a small hole. And uh, if everything looks good, so we'll be able to measure this side of the wire without um, basically cutting it that way. So if we need to add more windings, we can do it. And we'll get out our handy dandy meter here and take the measurements. Okay, okay here we have a pin here, and I'm going to see if I can just stick it through the insulation. I might use my finger now because I can't push very hard. Ouch! Okay, I'll be careful when you do this. The insulation's tough. I just jab myself with the pin. Okay. So you can get the pin into the insulation, hopefully without breaking it or jabbing yourself. Let me okay. Let me put the camera down and maybe I can get the pin into there. Oh my gosh. Maybe I'll take a pair of pliers and stick it in. Okay. There we go. Pliers. Grab the pin low and just jam it in. Okay. And we'll test that to see if we get good continuity. Okay. Okay, so it looks like the pin wasn't making good conductivity, so I re-jammed it through again with the pliers, and this time I broke the pin off. But it looks like, I'm just testing it with the continuity meter, that we're getting continuity through it. And so, um, let's hook it up to our LRC meter and uh, see what our inductance is. Okay, so here we go. Here's our coil. And, um, let's get the glare off of that. 34 micro -henries. Okay, I think we're aiming to closer for closer to 50. Of course, you know, if you make the uh, length longer, it has lower inductance. So maybe I should try to rewind it so that the length is shorter and maybe, maybe make it a double layer and see if that helps because uh, 35 is lower than what I was aiming for. I was aiming more like for 50 or so. Okay. Okay, so I think I'm going to start a little bit down further so there's a little bit of edge up here so that the coils aren't right on the edge and I'll just try to wind maybe nine windings in the middle here and then uh, another nine on top of that and our yeah and we'll see if we get our inductance up by making the length shorter you know according to our equation though the shorter length or the num larger number of turns per length gives you a higher inductance so we'll try that okay, okay. so there we have um nine windings on there and i'm probably going to take some electrical tape and just wind it around the coils like so so that they'll stay in place so I can do a second layer and then we'll measure the inductance and see what we come up with. Okay, okay so there we go. I'm just wrapping the electrical tape around the coils like so. And I'll just go all the way around once and uh, get those situated. Then we'll start a second winding layer. Okay, again, there's the first layer taped up, and let me start a second layer. Okay, okay and here we go, winding our second layer on there. Okay. okay, so there we go. I taped it off for the second layer, and let's try to take a measurement of that and see what we get. See what our inductance is. Okay, so this time I stuck a different needle through there, a thicker needle, and we have our two layer windings here. And it looks like our inductance is now pretty close to uh, what we want it to be, 56 microhenries. Okay, so I think we'll go ahead and go with this. We'll probably cut off the, the wire and um, try to duplicate this design for another coil. 
it should be interesting. Okay, so here we have our coil, and I'm taking this is a 15 kV 1 nanofarad capacitor, and this is about a 100 ohm resistor, and I'm feeding it with a sine wave from my uh, BK Precision uh, signal generator up here, and I'm using a resistor to kind of um, uh, separate the circuit from the input so they're de decoupled. And um, let's take a look here. Okay, so let me um, let me twiddle with the frequency up here. I'm going to change the frequency. I'm going to okay. There we go. I'm going to find out where the peak is, the maximum amplitude. You know, go higher, lower, kind of twiddle with it until I find about the maximum. Okay, and there it's about 688, and it's a fairly broad Q, so it's um, it's hard to find the exact peak. You know, there's some. Okay, so anyway, here's our calculations with uh, using 51 nanofarads or 51 uh, nanohenries or microhenries. I'm sorry, 51 microhenries and one nanofarad capacitor. So one of them uh, gives a, a, a calculated frequency of about 699. So given that it's a pretty broad Q, um, it's pretty close. Okay. So it looks like our calculations are going to be um, pretty much what we expect. Okay. Okay. So let me uh, let me try putting some more capacitors in there, and we'll see if we can get the frequency we're looking for. Okay. So according to my calculations, I was looking back at the resonant coil of our Tesla coil when it's grounded and has the the uh, uh, capacitive uh, uh, toroid on top and it was about 268 kilohertz and so I was putting in different values of capacitors different numbers and if I put 7 in it will get to 264 kilohertz which is pretty close to our resonance of 268 and so what I have done here let's take a look so I have um, twisted uh, the wires of 7 of these 15 kV capacitors together and let's let's put them in the circuit and we'll see how close we are based on our calculations. Okay. We'll test this out. Okay, so here we have our uh, let's get our scope propped up a little bit here. Okay. So there we go. We got our scope hooked up and uh we got our signal generator and I'm twiddling this around the different frequencies. And I'm looking for the maximum here. Okay. So it looks like the maximum is about 284 kilohertz. So maybe I will try adding one more capacitor to this guy and see if um, see if that will tune the frequency down a little bit. Okay. Okay, so I added a total of eight capacitors to our device here. Okay. And um, I've been twiddling at the frequency a little bit and uh, trying to find the maximum here. And I think the maximum is right about there, which is about 279 kilohertz. And that's really close. I mean, the, the the bandwidth is fairly broad. So let me let me just try it one more time. See what the maximum is. Okay. Okay. So 277, which is pretty close to 268. So I think we are probably close enough there. Okay. So I think we might be good to go. This might be a good good amount of capacitors, eight of them, okay, for our uh, Tesla coil. And maybe we'll do a high voltage test with that and see how it works, okay? Okay, so here's the real test. We have our new uh, primary that we wound for the Tesla coil. 
and um, I just have some various things here to hold the wires down so they don't pop out. Here is a um, banana jack connector that I put some pins in to make a spark gap. And here's our, what is it, eight capacitors, I think. Okay, that we just saw tuning up. I showed this in another video. This is a high voltage resistor. And I showed this one in another video. Um, it's a high voltage uh, power supply that I made from a computer power supply and a quote unquote 400 kV uh, Chinese voltage multiplier, which is more like 15 kV. And uh, I'm just going to plug this thing in. And we will test out our coil. Okay, so there we go, we got our spark gap going. And there's a neon light there. So we're going to do another video on. And it is, I don't know if you can see that, but it is definitely producing some very high voltage there. Okay. And that's arcing to my hand, by the way. There we go. Right through the uh, plexiglass shielding. Tuned up pretty good.